Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 11 in our marvelous series of new tutorials on the Arduino microcontroller. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. Ah, that is delicious. No sugar, no cream, none needed. It is very refreshing and delicious on a day like today. What I also need you to get is your eLEGO Super Starter Kit for the UNO R3. If you don't have this already, look in the link down below, click on it, get it, 35 bucks. All the lessons in the series are going to be using components from this, and so this will keep us busy for a long, long time. Okay, what we are going to do today is we are going to learn how to print from the Arduino. Now we've done some pretty cool things already. We can control the pins on the LED, we can send values to them, we can read values from them, but sometimes we need to have the Arduino to send us messages or to send us information. So we need to know how to get information that we can read out of the Arduino and we do that with the print commands. And so that is what we will be doing today. You got a little preview of this in lesson number 10 where we were reading some voltages from the Arduino and we needed to print them out. So we got a little sneak preview there, but we're going to kind of dive a lot deeper into that topic today. And so what I need to do is I need to move over to a window that you will be able to see. And then we need to jump right in. You can see that I have my Arduino IDE up and running. And so let's jump in and let's Let's learn all about <clears throat> printing. So first of all, I need to declare some variables. I am going to declare a variable j, and so it is just a counting variable, so I'm going to call it an int for an integer. I just need uh, an integer. I'm going to call it j, and I'll start with j equal to 1. So I declare the variable j. It's an integer, and I set it to 1. Now, if we are going to print in the void setup, you have to set up <clears throat> the serial monitor. You only need to do it once. So where do you do it? You do it in the void setup and you go capital S serial, turns that happy little orange color, serial.begin. <clears throat> and then there's only one parameter and that is the baud rate. We'll talk a little bit more about baud rate, but we'll set it at <clears throat> a baud rate of 9600 in our command with a colon. And then what we're going to do down here to get started, we're going to say <coughs> serial.print. What are we going to print? We're going to print J. In this case, it would just, just print 11111. <coughs> That's not very interesting. So we'll say J is equal to J plus 1. So it's going to print J and then it's going to increment j by 1. And then if we just ran this, it's just going to be bzzz, it would go too fast. So we need to slow it down a little bit. So I'm going to say delay, let's say 3 fourths of a second, 750 milliseconds, right? No, no, you don't use numbers down here. That's bad programming. You set up a variable. We're going to come up here and say int. What is our int? Uh, delay le, or let's call it wait t okay and let's set that to 750 and now we will use the variable wait t anytime we want to have a pause and that is better than using constants down in the program so we're going to print j we're going to increment j and then we are going to wait now I'm going to download the program. We got the happy little green bar. And now we need to look at the serial monitor. So I need to hit this button to pop up the serial monitor. And then I need to try to put it over here where you can see it a little better and it's not covering up other things. <clears throat> okay, and I need to get smaller here to get out of your way. All right, so it is not working, right? The program ran, but nothing is printing out. What could possibly be wrong? Hmm. Let's see. Am I out of your way enough? I think I'll be out of your way here. All right. We said operate the serial monitor at what baud rate? 9600. 
if you look down here, okay, if you look down here at our serial monitor, what is that set to? That is set to 115,200. <clears throat> Guys, it doesn't matter what baud rate you use, but the baud rate that you use here in the Arduino program has to be the same as the baud rate that the serial monitor is set to. So since we said 9600, let's set this to 9600. Let's download it again. It's happy. And let's see. Oh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is counting and it is printing. What is the problem now? The problem is it's going across the page. And as you see that now, it's really hard to see. That would be called very poor formatting. And I need to scoot that just a little bit. Okay, that's very poor formatting. The problem is <clears throat> if you just use a print command, it just prints it out and it will just go across the page forever. So what we need to do is we need to tell it to go to a new line. With that, instead of saying print here, we say print LN, and that sort of that says print and then go to a new line. So let's download that and see what happens. Boom, one, two, three, all nice down the page. And so that is very nicely formatted and going through. So we've made a little bit of, of a counter here and we have achieved our first little success in printing. Okay, but let's see if we can do something more interesting. I am going to make a new variable <clears throat> and I am going to call it a string. Okay, int is a round number, an integer like minus one, minus two, zero, one, two, numbers like that. A string is a string of characters. And so I'm going to have uh, my string. This is the name of the variable, and I'm going to set it equal to, uh, and I put in quotes, j equal space. So j space equal space, and then put a colon. So now <clears throat> I have a new variable. The new variable is called my string. What type of variable is it? It is a string. And then what value is put in it? Well, to put a value in it, you have to put the quotes around the value and then it puts what's in those quotes in your bucket and your bucket is named my string. So now let's do this. What does that do? Absolutely nothing. Why? Because <clears throat> I set the string up. I set the variable up, but I didn't use it. So we're going to come down here and before this print statement, we're going to put another print statement, and that is going to be serial.println. And this time, what am I going to print? My string. And then I'm going to end it with a semicolon. And let's download that and see what happens. Okay. J, you see it says j equal 1, j equal 2, j equal 3, on and on. Do you like that? No, that looks kind of goofy. So how would be a better way to do that? Instead of saying serial.print line of my string, we go back and say print. And so it will print my string, which is j equals, and then on that same line, it will print what the j is, and then it will go to the new line. j equal 1, j equal 2, boom, exactly what we wanted. Doesn't that look good? Okay, so you've learned two commands. You've learned serial.print. You've learned serial.println. You've learned that you have to turn the serial monitor on before you use it. Hey, what if we did 115,200? 115,200. That's fine as long as we come over here and set it to 115,200. So that would be a much faster baud rate. You would be pushing the data much faster. And we're not going to notice anything because we got that long delay in there. But you know, you can use higher baud rates to make it run faster. J equal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Most excellent. Let's play around a little more. We'll make a few more variables. Let's say that I have an int and I have x, and x is going to be equal to three. And I'm going to have another int, and we're going to call it y, and y is equal to seven. 
and then we are going to have another int, and it's going to be z. And I'm just going to declare z. I'm not going to put a value in it yet. All right. So x is 3, y is 7, and then z is just waiting for us to tell it something to do. Let me get... Uh, let me get this out of here. I'm just kind of giving you, <clears throat> you a different example now. So let's say that I say z is equal to x plus y. And now I can serial.println, and I can print z like that. And let's look at that. This is going to be kind of boring, but then we'll make it more interesting. So what's it going to print? x is 3, y is 7, and z is x plus y. So it is going to print 10 over and over and over because z is 10. Well, the problem is we have no idea what this, what is this 10 business that it's telling us? And so let's make a better print statement, something more, more uh, formatted. And so let's say uh, serial.print. And then I'm going to print x. <clears throat> and then I'm going to stay on the same line. So I'm going to build this print across the line. So I'm going to print int x and then serial.print. Now, I could declare a new string up here. And then I could just print the string like I could call, like I could call my string. I could call it space. I could call it space plus space. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to print my string. And then I'm going to serial.print. <clears throat> I'm going to print y. And then I'm going to serial.print. And then I'm going to print uh, start quote space equals space. All right. So you see two different ways that I am printing. I better finish that before I forget it. Okay. Do you see two different ways that we're printing a string? In one case, we're declaring a variable, which is a string variable, and we're putting in it what's inside the quote space plus space. Another way we can print is just make a string directly without using a variable, and that's done by whatever you put in quotes. And so I want you to think, what is this going to print? What's it going to be like? All right, so let's see. Let's download it. Okay, 3 plus 7 equal 10. So you notice when I said serial.printx, it did not put the character x, it put the value that's inside of it, which is 3. Then when I said serial.print my string, it didn't write the word my string, it wrote what was inside my string, which is space plus space. Space plus space. Do you see that? Ah. That's kind of messed up. Space plus space. OK. And then when I printed Y, it didn't print the character Y. It printed what was inside of Y. Well, then when I printed this, it printed that exactly because that is the string inside a quote. So what you got to see is you got to start understanding the difference between the name of the variable versus the value that's inside the variable. And so <clears throat> here you say 3 plus 7 is 10. That's true. That is true. But if I come in and I put quotes around the x, and if I put quotes around the y, what do you think is going to happen now? OK, now it's saying x plus y equal 10, which is true. But when I put the quotes around the x, it prints the character x or the string x. When I just say x, just print x, it will print the value that's inside of x. All right. So let's try this. What if I say 12 and 11? Let's see if this still works. 12 and 11. Uh, x plus y is 23. 12 and 11 is 23. So that's really working. I hope you're seeing how this works. Let's play around a little more because you're kind of beginning to get a little bit familiar and comfortable with variables. So what type of variables have we used here? Ints. 
Ints are integers. Those are like minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. It's the round numbers. We also have floating point numbers. So what if I was going to say pi is equal to 3.14? Could that be an int? No, because 3.14 is not a round number. It's one of the in-between numbers, so I need to say float. Pi is equal to 3.14. <clears throat> All right. What if I then say, I'm going to also have a float, and I'm going to say r is equal to 2, the radius is equal to 2, and then float area. And I'm not going to put a value in area, I'm just going to declare it as a float. And then we are going to come down here, and we're going to calculate area. So I'm going to take a lot of this stuff out, <clears throat> and I am going to, in my void loop, say area is equal to uh, pi, which I defined, times r squared, and the easiest thing for this case is just times r, times r, and then serial.println, and then what am I going to print? I'm going to print area, area, okay, and then let's see what happens there. We should get a float out of this thing, right? Oh my goodness, what did I forget here? Okay, why is this unhappy? Why the ugly little orange yelling at me, complaining? It says it expected a comma or a semicolon before float. Well, here's float. What did I forget to do on the line before? Semicolon. <clears throat> Let's try again. Oh, why does it not like r is equal to... Oh, I did it on the pi as well. Hopefully you guys caught it. Hopefully you were yelling at me through the screen and throwing things at me. Let's hope it works this time. Okay, it almost worked. Ah, man, I have just completely blown it on my semicolons, haven't I? But really what I'm doing, I'm letting you see what the error is. It is saying expected a semicolon before serial. So you look at serial, it expected it before it. And so sometimes the error is on the line behind the one that is being uh, highlighted. So let's try it now. Oh, it's going to be happy. It's going to be happy. And what is it printing? Uh, seems to be, oh, 12.56. So the radius is 12.56. Is this nicely formatted or poorly formatted? It is poorly formatted. So let's do a better job formatting. And so what we are going to do is we're again going to start printing across the page. And so we are going to say <coughs> serial.print. And we're going to say in quotes, a circle with radius space. So that is a string. It's going to print the string a circle with radius. And then I'm going to serial.print. And then what is the radius? Well, it's r. It's the variable r, so no quotes. <clears throat> and then serial.print. has an, I should not, yeah, has an area of, okay, and then what we will do is then print the area. And just to be proper, then what would be good? I'm going to do a serial dot print ln and then I'm going to put a period on the end and that would be a string. Okay, so now what is the print b in? That's no good, print ln. Now what, ah, okay, print ln. What's the problem? This is going to send it to a new line and I don't want it to. I only want it to go to a new line after I've printed my whole sentence. And so let's download that. Oh, I need to make this bigger, huh? I'm, okay, let's make this bigger. A circle with radius 2 has an area of 12.56. What is not good? The 2, I can't put a space after the 2 because that's just a number. I need to put the space before the H and after the F. Before the H and after the F. You guys, when I'm grading students' work and looking at things, nothing makes me 
more upset. Well, I guess there are things that make me more upset, but one of the things that really makes me upset is uh, if you don't format nicely. So now you see a circle has a radius. A circle with radius 2 has an area of 12.56. I think that is pretty darn good. Let's uh, let's make it a little, inter little more interesting. <clears throat> let's say now after we do this we say r r is equal to r plus 0.5 because who wants to just sit and read all day what the uh, what the area of a radius of circle 2 is so let's do this oh forgot it man i'm doing terrible with semicolons today all right so now let's call this up Open it up. A circle with radius 2 has an area of 12.56. A circle with radius 2.5 has an area of 19.62. <clears throat> Do you see something neat that's kind of happening here? You could actually start generating like tables of values where you're stepping through different radiuses and you're calculating what the different areas are. You could print this out and have kind of a lookup table where a person could look up the radius that they're interested in and then could see what the area of that circle is. I think that that is pretty darn neat. Okay, <clears throat> I think that that's pretty good for today's lesson. We've learned that you can define string variables and then you can use those down here. Actually, also, let me just say, uh, let me do it one other way. Let me take this and let me cut it. And then up here, let me say, string, and I'll say mess1 for message1 is equal to that. I'm not going to forget my semicolon this time. Okay, then I, I come down here and a circle with radius. Here then we put mess1. No quotes because I want the, this is a variable and I want the variable that is contained within that variable. And then similar here, we will put a cut. And then up here, we will say, where was that? That is so hard to see. Oh, okay, there it is. String message two is equal to has an area of, and then down here I would print mess2, and then in fact even our humble little period, we will call that mess3. So we will define a new variable, <clears throat> string mess3 equals control V, and don't forget the semicolon, and then I will come here and I will say mess3. <clears throat> Is this making sense how we're using variables to our advantage? Okay, look at that. A circle with radius 2 has an area of 12.56 and so Boom, that is working. Okay, guys, I hope that you've gotten a little bit better feel for the different types of variables. You have ints, you have floats, and you have strings are the ones that we're working with so far. And then you can print or you can print line. And then what you also have learned is you've learned that the baud rate, the baud rate on your serial monitor has to be the same as the baud rate that you set in the program. And I need to tell you one more very, very important thing. You see here you have the option of selecting no line ending, new line carriage return, or new line and carriage return. That is when you print something that is the invisible characters that it puts on the end of the line. And you want to leave that on no line ending because if you're putting invisible characters <clears throat> on the end of your prints, it can cause unanticipated problems in programs that you write. And so just make sure one of the biggest things I see with students that have a program that doesn't work, a lot of times it's this has somehow gotten uh, set to something else and you don't want to do that. Okay, guys. This is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I am hoping that you guys will think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Also, 
I'm getting a lot of emails from people saying that they're not getting notifications of my new videos. Now, on the subscribe button, make sure that you touch the bell. Make sure you ring the bell, hit the bell, and then you will get notifications when new videos come out. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.